Hey guys, welcome back to The Build. You might have guessed it, today we're going to be spending a little bit more time on Ugly Truck, the 2000 Chevy Silverado. I picked this thing up back in January and my whole goal was to build something that's different, unique, fun, and in my opinion, a pretty cool sport truck. And what's going to set it apart is this guy right here, an 8.1 liter, 496 cubic inch, big block V8. This truck used to be powered by a 5.3, which, yeah, I know, is everybody's favorite motor. Now, the most popular comment that I get so far is something along the lines of this. Well, the 5.3, you can make a lot more power with it. Parts are cheaper, they're lighter, there's more readily available parts. Well, you guys are all 100% correct. But that's not what this build is about. This build is about doing something that's a little bit different and a little bit out of the ordinary. Now, one of the backstories behind this is my very first truck, a 1976 Chevy C10, had a 472 cubic inch Cadillac V8 under the hood. And so for me, a big block is kind of a sentimental thing. So that's one of the other reasons why I chose to go with such a large engine. Now, the goal eventually is I want to have some sort of a big exhaust driven power adder that sits right there on the front. So. You guys just have to stay tuned for that one. But today, before we get to any of that crazy stuff, we need an engine that's gonna actually fire up and run. And if you take a look at this wire harness, well, you probably notice that it's not connected to anything. So that's what we're gonna try to work on today. Now, most of the connections that you can make between the 5.3 and the L18 496 are going to be very similar. In fact, most will plug right up, but there are a few modifications that I'm gonna have to do to the harness. So. That's where we're gonna get started. The only thing that any engine needs to run properly as far as the computer is concerned are spark and fuel. Now, let's start with the spark side of things. This 8.1 has pretty much the exact same ignition coil setup and I believe firing order as the traditional LS that came out of this truck. Now, as you can see, the coils are mounted on the valve cover, again, just like the LS, and the main coil harness connector, well, that is a direct plug-in from the LS to the L18, so that'll plug directly in. Next up are the fuel injectors. Now, again, these are a little bit larger injector. However, the connector is exactly the same, minus a little long tab that sticks out on the uh, 5.3 harness, and I'll show you how I'm gonna take care of that later on, but it's a simple fix. So. At first glance, it seems to be everything is going to plug right in. The camshaft and the crankshaft sensor, again, those are responsible for handling both the fuel side of things and the spark side of things for the computer. I am going to have to change a few things around as far as both of those are concerned, however. Number one, they're in different locations. On the LS, the crankshaft sensor is located down on the block by the starter, and the camshaft sensor is located behind the intake manifold at the top of the valley. On the L18, the camshaft sensor is located totally different up front on the timing cover, and the crankshaft sensor, that guy is located down near the block on the back of the driver's side cylinder head. So I'm gonna have to move a bunch of wires around in the harness. Not a huge deal, it's just kind of painstaking and it's gonna take a little while. The very first circuit that I'm gonna tackle is going to be the camshaft sensor. I need to get it from all the way Back here, this is the branch that goes down to the automatic transmission. I need to get this sensor all the way up down to this branch here, which goes down along the front of the motor. So, here we go. So this might look like kind of a mess at the moment, but most of the moving of the wires is actually already done. Now there's, I believe, four different things that I had to change. Number one, the crankshaft sensor. As you can see, I've got this thing kind of coiled up here because there's a lot of extra wire because originally the crank sensor went down below the front of the motor, down to the back, kind of near the starter. So now this is gonna run up into the branch that goes down kind of with the transmission. So I've got a little bit extra here. I'll trim it off when I repin the sensor. Camshaft sensor, that was the next one that we had to move. Originally, this went where the crankshaft sensor now goes, but now I've had to route it back towards the front of the motor and down towards the front. Now, this isn't long enough, so I'm gonna have to cut apart the old harness and take about another foot or so out of the camshaft sensor harness, and I'll solder the two together so I have a nice connection. Now, that's the most important stuff to make the engine run, but there are a few more sensors that I had to move around. The next one was the coolant temp sensor. On the 8.1, it's mounted in the passenger side head. 
on the LS is mounted on the driver's side head. Now, there are ports on each side, however, when I tried to take the coolant plug out of the driver's side head, it actually just shattered the little four-pointed uh, socket engagement part or whatever you want to call it and so it wouldn't even back out now it's not going to leak but instead of trying to mess around with that drill it tap it out i said you know what let me just keep it where it originally was on the 8.1 so i extended the let's see this guy right here coolant temp sensor in the branch that goes across the top of the engine uh, the final one, these two wires right here, are for the knock sensors. On the LS, the knock sensors actually sit below the intake manifold, and on the 8.1, they sit down on either side of the block, kind of like they do in the later LS stuff, like the LS3, um, I believe LS7, and kind of newer stuff like that. So, all the modification is done, all the wires are where they need to be. And from here, once I extend the few that need to be extended, all I gotta do is tape this thing up and put the protective plastic back on it, and you'll never even know that it was changed around. So fast forward in time a little bit, I've got a lot of the harness taped up, put back together with a protective sleeving on the outside, so a lot of it looks like factory. I've got a little bit left to do, but first I want to take care of the remaining connections on the crankshaft and the camshaft sensor. They need to be repinned, and here's what that means. This is the original connector that came off of the cam sensor harness on the 5.3. From left to right, the colors go red, this is supposed to be pink, it's kind of dirty, and this is like a brownish color. Now, the cam sensor on the 8.1 has the same exact colors, but they're in a different order. It goes brownish, pink, still in the middle, and then red on the right-hand side. Basically, from one connector to the other, the outside wires have to switch positions. Now, that's not all you've got to do on the cam sensor on the L18 because the plug, even though from the outside it looks almost exactly the same, well, the little slot where the plug goes into the sensor is on the different side. So you're going to need the cam sensor pigtail from an 8.1 harness. Obviously, I have the whole harness, so not a big deal, but if you're going to attempt this without the harness, you have to do a little bit of shopping. So now all I've got to do, because this came from an 8.1 harness with the wires already in the correct position, all I've got to do is match this up color for color with the cam sensor wires in the 5.3 harness, and I'm good to go. Obviously, I'll take care of the same thing on the crank side. And then, for the most part, this harness is done. For peace of mind on a connection like this, I prefer to solder rather than using a butt type crimp style connector, especially because those are very bulky and they'll make it difficult to properly wrap the harness once you're all done. I slide a piece of heat shrink tube over the connection first, twist the ends of the wires together, and then just apply a little bit of solder over the connection to keep things permanently stuck together. After that, I'll slide the shrink tube up shrink it with a torch, and tape everything back together for good. That pretty much wraps up the wiring portion of the 5.3 to 8.1 swap. Once I got everything taped back together, I started by fishing the back end of the harness down over the back of the motor on the top of the transmission and kind of out to the driver's side where it attaches to all the stuff on the transmission. You know, the shift position sensor, input and output speed sensors, and so on. Then I got the rest of the harness run down across the firewall, down the frame rail on the passenger side for the O2 sensors down there, um, the other harness that goes down the front of the motor across and back towards the starter. Pretty much everything's in place and it actually fits pretty good considering, well, it was all designed for a 5.3. The only thing I didn't show you guys was the injector connectors on the 8.1. Now, it's actually the same plug. It'll click right into the injector, but for some reason on the 5.3, they've got these little white plastic pieces on the end of the plug that are maybe another inch or two long, and that just won't really fit nicely below the fuel rail on the 8.1 because the injectors are kind of tucked in at a bit of an angle. Now, that's not a big deal. All I'm going to do is swap just the very end of the wire connector, not even the connector itself, just the top part of it with the harness that came from the 8.1. It's just short like a normal harness, so that'll allow it to click in. No interference issues at all. Now, I want to say thank you guys for watching. I do appreciate each and every one of you. And if you haven't subscribed already, you may want to consider it because we do have some great content coming for GM trucks in general, whether it's this 8.1 swap or the 2020 L5P that we got out sitting in the background. But again, that's all fun for another day. Thank you guys again for watching, and I'll catch you next time.